it's Glimas time. Hey guys, so we are here, and today I'm going to be showing you a Rec Room tutorial, which I don't know if I've actually ever done one, but I'm going to be showing you just because. Yes. Also, this Rec Room tutorial, um, it is based off of circuit boards, and there was another YouTuber named Branchy, I'm pretty sure, and they also made a tutorial on, cir on circuit boards about seven months ago-ish. Uh, I just checked and somebody did that, but I'm making this tutorial anyways because I don't know. But anyways, yeah. Um, so go check out their video. Um. Anyways, I'm gonna be showing you what circuit boards are, how to use them, and yeah, let's just get into it. So to start with getting the circuit board, we have to obviously just get our maker pen. So um, if you don't know how to do that, go into your watch, go to backpack, and click use on the maker pen, or you can favorite it and grab it off your back. Now, just a heads up, the circuit board is a Circus V2 chip, so if you know nothing about Circus V2, I recommend go learn some basics or just something before you come here. Anyways, let's start by actually getting out our circuit board chip, so you want to look at the top of your maker pen, open the palette, go to the Circus V2 section, click search chips, and now we can just search up the circuit board. And let's just spawn this in right here. Okay, now that we have your circuit board chip, um, you can see that it's just kind of blank. There's no inputs or outputs. That's because we have to manually add them ourselves. So, like, in simple terms, it's kind of like just a base for creating your own chip, I guess. So, we want to change these to the configure tool and configure the circuit board to start. So, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a Flappy Bird chip. So, I'm, we're just going to call this a uh, Flappy Bird and submit now the name is change of flappy bird and now we're going to create a function a function is basically just a section of inputs or outputs so we're just going to call this because i'm lazy we're just going to call it flap you don't really need multiple functions it's just better if you want to organize stuff but this is just a small kind of chip we're not going to add too much so now you can see there's a new function down here and if we click on it then it the, it shows inputs and outputs, and we can add different ones if we click on these. So we're going to start by adding a couple inputs. So we are going to add um, an input. We're going to call this input um, can flap, and we're going to change this to a bool. This input will be um, will be able to toggle if we can flap or if we can't. So that's where we're making it a bool, and that's where we're calling it. So then click create. Bam, now there's a new input on your circuit board. Now we're going to go ahead and create another one. We're going to call this speed. This will be the speed of which you go up and flap and stuff. We're going to change this to type to be a float variable. And create. Now we have another one that says speed. Now finally we're going to add in, we're going to close this input tab and make an output. And this output is going to be called, um call it after use and we're going to keep it in execute and i'll create it and now there's an there's an output for an execute here that says after use great now we have all our inputs and outputs we can just close this configure menu and we can start actually editing the chip so if we click on our edit tool and our maker pen here and click on the chip you can see we have our inputs and outputs here so i'm going to go ahead and just move this over here because we need, might need quite a bit of space and we're going to start by grabbing our chips that we're going to need. So let's open our palette again. Go to go. So open our palette. We're going to go to the circuits v2 chips and we're going to search. We're going to start by searching for a get local player chip. And I recommend having surface on. We're just going to spawn this right here. Next, we're going to next we're going to grab a player right and velocity right here. And then we're gonna grab a player left hand velocity and just put that above or below. Center these out real quick. And next we're going next we're going to grab a vector split right here. And we're gonna put two of these for each hand velocity. Then we're gonna grab an add chip and we're gonna put this here, only one. Next, we're going to grab a greater or equal chip. You could use greater than, but I like greater or equal. It's just better. 
Next, we're going to grab an and ship because we're going to add another bool that needs to be true. And after that, we're going to grab an if ship. Then we'll grab a velocity set. I like to use velocity set instead of velocity add for the purpose that in the velocity set there's no maximum distance. Because that always just gets me confused and stuff and I just don't like it. Next, we're going to grab a vector create and we'll put this right below right below here let's say and then we're going to grab a forward vector right here and we're going to once again get grab another add ship and just put that right here and now we need to add a bool variable ship and i'll just say let's put this up here up here i guess now we're going to grab an event receiver, and we're going to put this dot here. Then we're going to configure it with our configure tool. Scroll down to be an update 30 hertz. Now that we have this, we're going to clone one of these to be over here for our bool variable ship. And now I'm pretty sure we are good to start wiring. Let's go ahead and move this back over here. So, we're gonna start by making the Flappy Bird mechanic, and then we'll add what we need to add for the inputs and outputs and stuff. So, the local player will go into the left hand and right hand velocity. These will both go into their own vector splits. And then we'll take the Y, the Ys, the Y values of both vectors, and then put them into the add. This add will go into the bottom of the greater or equal, and we'll change the A value to, I like to do negative 9, just so it kind of feels good and not hard to do. Next, we're going to take this greater or equal and put it into one of the outputs on the AND ship. Then we're going to take the result of the AND and put this into the condition on the IF chip. Then we're going to set the velocity of the target, which is going to be the local player. And then we're going to wire this execute output to the after use. So after the velocity is set, it will send an execute. Now we're going to start back at the input. We're going to go we're going to we're going to take this canned flap and put this over here to the condition on the bool variable. Take this event receiver and constantly check on what this is set to. Then we're going to take this condition and wire it to the other input on the and ship. Then we're going to take this vector create, wire it into the add along with the forward vector, which the forward vector should be getting the vector of the local player once again. Then we're just going to go ahead and take our wire tool and change the y value on this vector create. Uh, let's say 2, because we don't want it to be too flappy or just fall down. Then we're going to take the sum of this add ship, and that will go into the direction. Then this speed, the speed on the velocity set, will go over here to the speed on the input. So whatever we put in here will, go, will be the speed on the velocity set. Finally, to make this entire thing working, wire this update 30 hertz chip to the to the execute on the if chip. And bam, now we have it basically done, and I'm going to show you what it can do. So if we go out of the editing and we take our wire tool, we can change this can flap to true. And we can change the speed to something. I recommend doing a speed of 4. I just find it, like, clean, and since it's kind of a small room right now, then I recommend that. So now we have this at the true and the speed set. If I flap my arms down, it's like Flappy Bird. It just flap. And I can show you. If I were to set this to false, then that that, that makes the the output on the that bool variable false. And if I try to flap, it doesn't work. And actually, a smart thing to do if you're going to use this in a room with with that has a bunch of other things is to configure this bool variable inside of the circuit board. And change the name of it to let's say we'll just do we'll just do can flap just because it's saying if you can or cannot flap. So now you can change the speed to whatever you want. Like if I wanted to do nine 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 that this and then change this back to true, then ah! I'm stuck in the wall. Okay, I'm I'm good. Yeah, so this is a good way to like mess with mess with your friends if you want to. You just make the speed really high and then they just go flying if there's no roof. And yeah, so um I can also change this to after the use. 
So just for showing you what this does after the use, I'll take an emitter V2 here. And after the use, it, it will um, set looping and start. So it's obviously constantly setting the looping to false every time you flap. So um, it, once I do this, then it plays a little emitter. There's some confetti there, I think. It changes something more noticeable. Let's do this. Yeah, that thing plays for a while, but whatever. You get the point. Once I flap, it'll play the emitter, and that's just a demonstration of what this after-use execute can do. So with that being said, that's basically a general idea of how circuit boards work, and also how you can make a flappy bird mechanic with them. So I hope you guys get it, and um, I hope you guys can make some really cool stuff with circuit boards like these, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Sorry I haven't uploaded for a while, but uh, I just wanted to get this video out. And bye!